Integrated primary care is when a behavioral health uh, professional is embedded in a primary care practice, or it could be another m medical practice such as um, cancer treatment or pediatrics. Um, and that mental health professional works side by side with the medical professionals. Their office is right next to them. The patients check in at the same desk where the patients check in to see their medical professional. They use the same waiting room. They're part of a team. They're not just a visiting professional that comes in for a consult. Groups are beneficial for um, patients in medical practice when there's a behavioral health professional there because groups are helpful for all patients that are experiencing medical problems or who are having anxiety in a medical practice because groups are curative. Uh, they help people feel less isolated and when people are medically ill they tend to feel ashamed and isolated of their condition and so being with other patients with similar diagnoses People feel uh, much less alone, much less ashamed. Um, they also uh, get hope from each other. Um, somebody makes a, um, an, a, an advance in what they're trying to work on, and the other person in the group says, well, I could do that. I know this person. They're like me, and I could do that. Uh, so uh, it also um, helps with access. Often in primary care practice, there's more patients than there are either primary care physicians or behavioral health people to deal with. And so a lot of it cuts down the wait time for people. I've done groups for insomnia, and these are what we call CBTI groups, where you do some behavioral changes for people with insomnia. Uh, and this ha has recently been um, set, uh, claimed to be the, the first choice of treatment in medical care for insomnia rather than medication. So there's a great demand for these groups now because there's many, many primary care patients that have insomnia. Um, we've also, I've also done what's called a, a shared medical appointment where I co uh, work with a physician uh, with people with chronic conditions. We did a group for women with insomnia and we did it once a month for uh, women in our practice with insomnia and they got their medical appointment, all their evaluations, their tests, their new medications, and they had a group with me. We did it all together. And that helps again with the great deal, as I said, with the um, sense of isolation and uh, discouragement and hopelessness. Uh, the best place if people are looking for a group for a medical condition, they can talk to their primary care physician and ask them if they know about one. And if they don't, ask them how they could get one started in their practice. With the Affordable Care Act now, um, there is a lot of encouragement to have behavioral health professionals embedded in primary care. So if uh, there were a, a primary care group in your area that didn't have a behavioral health professional, you could make an appointment and talk to them about how are they getting their behavioral health needs met and would they um, find it useful to have somebody right there on site where they could, uh, the patients would have to go out to a psychiatric clinic or to a private office and um, it would help them meet some of the requirements of the Affordable Care Act. In these times of uncertainty about what will be happening to the Affordable Care Act, I think we have to go along as if things are going to continue the way they are. And particularly with the, uh, the recommendation for embedding uh, behavioral health in primary care, that is also a recommendation of Medicare, and I don't think that will change. People can expect from the group um, to understand how long it's going to go on for, what the role of the leader is, what the role of the members are. They can expect to have an opportunity to talk about um, their, uh, their illness, their feelings about their illness, and to explore ways they can better manage their illness. Also to perhaps explore things that might be getting in the way of them uh, doing the best self-care that they can. And they can also expect to meet other people, um, which is very helpful. Um, some groups might meet once a week. Um, some might meet every other week. When I do the insomnia group, I meet every other week for uh, four sessions over eight weeks because I found that's the best um, spread of time to help people make changes. When, sometimes with the um, shared group medical appointments, they might meet every other week or once a month. Um, stress management groups might meet weekly 
to help people have a sense of co continuity. So a lot of it depends on the actual topic and the goals of the group. Uh, in the group, the things that will be happening will, will again be tailored to the goals of the group. Um, there could be open discussion. There could be assignments um, after a discussion. Often people, in, in, uh, when they're running medical groups, particularly stress group, teach relaxation and meditation. And that might be a piece of the group practicing it every week. Um, <clears throat> so there's often a time to go over a new idea or a new topic. And then there's an idea time to, for the group to talk about it and talk about how they might integrate it into their daily life. Another group that um, I have run and others run in medical practices is a group for the, dog, for the physicians and the other um, uh, medical clinicians to talk about the places where they feel stuck with their patients. It gives them a forum to talk about things they really have no one else to talk about and gives them an opportunity. They're called balance groups and it gives them an opportunity to think about new ways of looking at the case. Uh, and they're very helpful and they really do help um, decrease burnout in physicians because they decrease isolation. <clears throat> 